In this video, let us try to understand the various tools and techniques used for collecting detailed uh, requirements. The requirements uh, gathering triangle. So all the tools and techniques for requirement collection can be <clears throat> grouped into three major groups. They are the, the visual, auditory, and kinesthetic. Visual means that is a, those are the things we see, eye-catching techniques like charts and stuff like that. Star, charts, drawings, and stuff like that. Those comes under the visual uh, tools. Then the auditory tools, things we hear, conversational techniques, etc. And then we have kinesthetic uh, tools, the things we feel, a touch, emotion, basically prototypes, which can be uh, felt, something you can grab, feel, taste, or smell. So basically, the requirements, gathering tools and techniques can be grouped into visual, auditory, and kinesthetic. So these are the uh, list of tools and techniques. Uh, and uh, it has uh, brainstorming brainstorming, interviews, focus groups, uh, questionnaires and surveys, benchmarking, voting, multi-criteria analysis, affinity diagrams, mind maps, nominal group techniques, observation, facilitation, context diagrams, and prototypes. I will walk you through all these things uh, in detail as we progress. Now, brainstorming, most of us, uh, or almost all of us are familiar with this, hopefully. Uh, it is a group creativity technique. That means we need a group uh, to brainstorm. The focus is on quantity. The focus is on uh, creating as many ideas as possible. We are not that <clears throat> focused on quality of ideas. Our focus is on generating as many ideas as possible. And uh, while performing brainstorming, we withhold criticism. So we don't validate the ideas while doing uh, the brainstorming. We welcome wild ideas, and sometimes if we get related ideas, we combine them and we build upon each other's <clears throat> ideas. Typically a brainstorming is uh, uh, facilitated by a facilitator uh, and everybody in the room will get an equal opportunity to participate. The ideas are captured. Sometimes they are grouped, classified, uh, the key thing here is uh, we don't get into validation of those ideas. Our objective is to generate as many ideas as possible. And brainstorming sessions, uh, it will have a start time and end time and certain norms like only one can speak uh, at a time and you move from move clockwise or anti-clockwise uh, directions. So these... Uh, ground rules are established for uh, effective uh, brainstorming. And who are all the participants of brainstorming? Generally, the impression is uh, brainstorming is always attended by experts in the domain. But in real practice, sometimes we invite people from people without that domain knowledge to study or to understand uh, or sometimes they will be able to give uh, very wild and fresh ideas because they are not inhibited by the norms of the domain. Then uh, 
for collecting requirements, one may have to conduct uh, interviews for requirements collection. Uh, these are structured conversations with one person at a time where you ask predetermined questions and record their answers. And this is a series of interviews and it should have a schedule and uh, the budget for these things must be uh, factored into the project budget. For one project uh, where I worked, uh, we had to travel to 23 states of uh, India and and we were supposed to and we and hold discussions uh, with uh, their authorities uh, to collect requirements for a particular project uh, which is connected with uh, managing water resources of the country. So extensive travel was involved. Uh, their time must be available. We should have structured questionnaire so that at the end of it, we can collate the findings and we need budgets for travel, accommodation, everything. So all these things must be factored into the project schedules as well as to the project budget. Then uh, focus groups, it is more like a task force, a small group of carefully selected participants to contribute to open discussions for research. So basically this is a, a group of domain experts coming together to discuss about a problem and they should they will be experts in that particular field. And again, for focus group, there should be a, an agenda and format. There should be a start time and end time and there should be budget allocated for, for it. Then questionnaires and surveys. Uh, again, if you want to uh, get the inputs from a large number of people, then the most preferred uh, approach would be questionnaires and online questionnaires and online surveys. We are talking about structured questionnaires and customer surveys. And again, this need to have a schedule and uh, budget there will be effort spent on designing the questionnaires and effort spent on conducting the surveys. So this is, uh, these need to be budgeted. Uh, then benchmarking. Uh, benchmarking means always comparing our project uh, or the product uh, with a better product so that uh, we can learn from the better product much quickly. Uh, it has, you have to plan for benchmarking, you have to perform benchmarking and validate the findings and act on the benchmark findings. Uh, in one organization where I worked, uh, our uh, quality management practices were considered as the best in the industry so another company wanted to improve their quality assurance practices. Uh, for that, they wanted to benchmark their processes with our processes. But again, it has to be planned uh, and then performed and the findings must be validated. Uh, and if you don't act on the benchmark findings, the whole effort is a waste of time and energy. Uh, the next uh, thing is voting. Uh, decisions based based on voting. So we have multiple uh, ideas and we have to pick up the best, then voting uh, is, the, is the best. The next uh, is the multi-criteria decision analysis. Uh, criteria is defined, criterias are defined upfront and overall weightages are also defined. Candidates are evaluated based on the criteria. Top scorers will qualify. Let us say we are recruiting, uh, we have to recruit a person. Uh, so we have to first define the criteria like qualification, professional experience, uh, proficiency in the local language, 
uh, date of joining, etc. Uh, but if it is a if it is an evaluation of a supplier, we we may have to look at uh, that organization's health, their track record, uh, their pricing, uh, their quality standards, uh, the date of supply. Uh, the historical information. So based on the context, these parameters may change. Uh, but whenever we are in a high value procurement situation, it is always better to create a purchase committee uh, and along with this multi-criteria decision analysis so that we can always make unbiased uh, decisions. Uh, so this is very, very important. Uh, the next is the affinity diagrams. Now, while brainstorming for uh, the features, uh, sometimes we may get a lot of distinct features which can be grouped uh, into a major feature. Like, for example, if and why identifying the features for a product. Now, uh, we may get something like uh, Google Pay, PayPal, uh, payment through Visa card, payment through MasterCard, payment via debit card, credit card, but all these things can be grouped as uh, online payments. Uh, so that can become a feature. So all these uh, unique things have an affinity towards payment. So uh, this is used widely to group the brainstorming findings. At the end of brainstorming, we get a number of ideas. Now, if you have to really make some meaning out of them, we have to consolidate them based on their affinities and group them into features. Then we have uh, another technique is the mind maps. It is used to capture or group ideas. So I've used mind maps extensively now, even before, uh, let us say, writing or developing a white paper. Now we have to identify the, the various sections of it, then subsections. So basically we have to design that white paper. So we, you, we use mind maps for it. So this is a great tool for consolidating uh, the output of uh, brainstorming sessions as well. So we can, uh, we can group ideas uh, based on their affinity and is a great tool to capture it based on affinity and uh, present it to other stakeholders. So there are tools uh, available. People use it very extensively. Then comes uh, the nominal group techniques. Uh, here we're talking about structured brainstorming with an anonymous voting process. So you come out with ideas and the, and the participants of the group, they vote the ideas uh, anonymously so that those ideas which gets uh, maximum votes can be given top priority. So you pose a question, moderator writes down ideas on a flip chart, individuals vote privately and highest scoring ideas are selected. Uh, so nominal group techniques can be used to prioritize uh, the output of uh, brainstorming based on voting. Then uh, observation, observing user behavior. Uh, for example, uh, we can observe uh, by, after creating a prototype, we can observe how a first time user is using it uh, or uh, how an experienced user is using it, 
how left-handers are using it, how right-handers are using it, uh, how the elderly people are using it, how the youngsters are using it. So based on this observation, we can fine tune uh, the requirements. Uh, then uh, facilitation skills, uh, this is very much required for the uh, requirements collector. Uh, so you, you should act as a guide. So you are not supposed to give uh, your ideas. Your objective is to collect uh, the group's best ideas by facilitating, by allowing them, uh, by working as a catalyst to collect uh, the best ideas from them. Uh, one of the uh, qualities required for facilitation is active listening without any bias. And one need to manage uh, time as well, because these things can go endlessly, uh, but then it should have facilitation sessions, should have a start time and end time. And within that, we should be able to manage uh, the whole facilitation meeting. And sometimes we get into conflict situations uh, among team members. Uh, so we should know how to manage conflicts as well to be a good uh, facilitator. So one, uh, especially while voting and uh, prioritizing features or grouping features, uh, one has to exhibit uh, great facilitation skills uh, to avoid uh, or, to, or to come out of conflict situation. Then comes uh, a context diagrams. Uh, this is very much helpful to define the boundary of the system uh, we are uh, uh, working on. Uh, once when I was in pre-sales, uh, we had to estimate a, a, a project very quickly. That means within a week's time, we are supposed to provide the estimates. So when I collected the tender document, that the tender document itself was around uh, 400 pages. So understanding the tender document itself is, uh, is a Herculean task. So all I did was you, you, I drew a big circle stating that uh, you don't know anything about it. Then you start reading the document and whenever you come across an input to the system that you document and whenever you come across an output, the system should generate that also you, you show as an arrow so after some time, you know the inputs that is getting into the system and the outputs the system has to generate. At that time, some logical partitions will start happening. Then you go for a work breakdown structure or a product breakdown structure, then a work breakdown structure. The scope will become more and more clearer uh, so context uh, diagrams are very much helpful in defining, while defining the scope of the system and while collecting the requirements. When we get a requirement, we should always, if system has to generate an output, we should know whether the corresponding inputs are available uh, within the system or in the environment. So if those things are not captured, we will not be able to uh, come out with the outputs. So context analysis diagram is a great tool for scoping uh, the scope of the system or the product we are developing. Then we have uh, prototypes. Uh, we may start with sketches, uh, which will get, which can get expanded into 2D drawings and then uh, 3D drawings. So in some other sessions, we already discussed about building information, modeling, and uh, 3D uh, systems. So prototypes helps uh, 
the users to or the potential users to visualize what they are going to get better uh, so that that act as a facilitator for deriving additional uh, requirements as well as uh, validating the uh, current requirements. So we discussed about uh, brainstorming, interviews, focus groups, uh, questionnaires and surveys, benchmarking, voting, multi-criteria decision analysis, affinity diagrams, mind maps, nominal group techniques, observation, facilitation, context diagrams, prototypes. Uh, we may not use all these in every situation. So depending on the nature of the team and the time availability and the complexity of the system we are handling, and the domain in which we are working, we may uh, use some of these things in, in tandem uh, to collect or to elicit requirements, to group them uh, based on their affinity, and then document them, and even develop prototypes around them, uh, and, to, uh, and, pr and provide the presentations uh, to the users uh, so that uh, we can both validate the requirements collected as well as we can facilitate additional requirements. So when we really build the out system or the output, uh, customers can be very happy because uh, most of their requirements, uh, majority of their key requirements are captured in the requirements analysis phase. If we miss out, a requirement during the requirements capture phase. And if that comes out after the development phase, it becomes a very costly affair to incorporate that into the, uh, into the product. So a requirements related uh, defect or omission, if you can capture within the requirements phase, uh, the cost factor can be one the same thing if you're capturing the requirements related omission, if you're capturing during the design phase, the cost is uh, 10x. Uh, the, cost, the cost is 10x and give me a minute. Uh, and uh, uh, if that is getting unearthed, a requirements omission is getting unearthed uh, after uh, releasing the system, it can be uh, 100x can be the cost of uh, repair. So it is very important uh, to capture all the valid requirements during the requirements collection phase itself. So thank you. Thank you very much. In the next uh, video, we'll be discussing more about scope definition and work breakdown structures.